last alliance. What the? Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the world of Middle Earth strategy battle game as we discuss one of the most iconic characters from the Lord of the Rings, Grond. Grond, also known as the Wolf's Head, is a massive battering ram featured in the epic battle for Pelennor Fields, created for one terrible purpose, to breach the gates of Minas Tirith. As fans of Middle Earth strategy battle game will know, Games Workshop has not yet sculpted a model for Grond or created a rule set for this terrifying monstrosity of war. So in this video, we will explore how you could possibly adapt Grond for Middle Earth strategy battle game and incorporate this legendary siege weapon into the game whilst actually sculpting the model. That's if everything goes to plan. Now this project is actually part of a wider collaboration within the MSBG community, started by my good friend Benji over at Benji's Hobbies. He mustered together a motley crew of Middle Earth strategy battle game content creators, bloggers and vloggers and posed a challenge to create a game profile for a faction or set of characters that has not yet been developed by Games Workshop for Warhammer. Seeing as GW are so slow at releasing new material for the MESBG community, this collaboration might act as some inspiration as to how you can add some new scenarios to your MESBG games, and if we are very lucky, maybe Warhammer will wake up and start releasing some new ideas for the game. Of course you will find links to all the other creators involved in this collaboration in the description below this video. Before I move on, it is no secret that I am not an experienced Middle Earth strategy game player. My involvement with the game until this point has mostly been driven by my desire to build dioramas and models of Middle Earth using the incredible Lord of the Rings miniatures from Games Workshop. So I might be barking up the wrong tree here with this, however I have always wondered why Games Workshop has not pulled the trigger on creating a model for such an iconic symbol of the forces of darkness in Middle Earth such as Grond. I mean it just seems like a no brainer to me, even to just have on the tabletop. So on that note, I have cobbled together a few thoughts on how Grond might be potentially used on the tabletop as a legitimate scenario or objective. Grond is a formidable weapon of war used by the forces of darkness in the battle for Middle Earth. Its sheer size and power would make it a challenging adversary for any army held up in a keep to face. To adapt Grond for MESBG, we will need to consider its size, capabilities and impact on the battlefield. For instance, one option would be to create a custom scenario where players must defend against the onslaught of Grond as it tears through the defences of Minas Tirith. Even though this might be a bit obvious, this would add an exciting and immersive element to the game as players must strategize and work together to destroy this unstoppable force. Now you might ask the question, does Grond really offer any other gameplay opportunities other than swinging and battering down a gate, and I would argue that it does. As anyone who has seen the movies will know, Grond also has platforms to carry a number of orcs and Mordor trolls that should be factored into the gameplay. Grond also has two potential damage possibilities that a point system needs to be figured out for gameplay, the first of course being battering damage and the second being the fire damage that comes forth from the mouth. You could also have potential archers on the platforms and of course the two great beasts dragging Grond across the battlefield could also be factored in in some way. I also think that Grand offers some pretty good duck and dive cover which could be used strategically, but I know nothing and these are just my thoughts as a mere pleb and coming at this game lacking in a bit of knowledge, and I'm being completely honest here, I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I am so ignorant about the rules etc, I decided to reach out to a couple of friends of mine who are far more experienced as players and well versed in the MASBG rules and lore. First on the list is Adam over at 3D Games, Wargaming and Terrain. Okay, what do I think about Grond being used in MESBG? Well, I would imagine it being used more in narrative play, like the Siege of Minas Tirith, more so than points match competitive play. That being said, it'd be really interesting to see it as a centerpiece for a legendary legion. Maybe you have to bring the great beast of Gorgoroth, you know, to pull Grond into battle. Maybe a troll as well. And then Grond itself providing buffs and extra abilities or like uh, power them up. Sort of like Azog signal tower. Uh, maybe like a area of effect, you know, banner effect, resistant to magic. Maybe it soups up the troll, gives him some needed boosts, like give him monstrous charge. Something like that, that'd be pretty cool. Points. <coughs> oh, I don't know. 
Sadly, Adam couldn't take part in the full collaboration, but I'm super grateful to have some of his insights on how he would use Grand on the tabletop. Be sure to check out his latest project, Goblin Town from The Hobbit, built from scratch. An absolutely epic build that I'm sure you guys would love. Now, I'm gonna take a quick segue here to actually talk about the sculpting process of Grand. As you can see, everything did not quite go as planned. This is mostly because I was trying to match the model from screenshots of the movies and had quite a few scaling issues. But fear not, polymer clay, like Super Sculpey, is such a versatile material that even if you make mistakes and have baked the clay already, you can go back and cut and carve bits off, reframe your perspective and then carry on as if you meant to do it in the first place. I could have used the magic and power of editing to make you guys think that I sculpted it perfectly the first time, but we'll save that for Instagram shorts. The thing that made me realize that my scale was off was that I actually remembered that the behind the scenes DVD from The Return of the King had a whole segment on Grand that takes a really close look at the bigature. And from this, I was able to reframe and correct some of the issues that I had in my facial structure. And with some of those sculpting errors corrected, it's time to move on with building the gaming profile for Grand with some deep and meaningful insights from John over at JMAX Armies of Middle Earth. Right, if I had Morgoth's hammer Grand, I would use it to smash my opponent's army off the table. This allowed me to win my first ever GBHL 100 event. That's my plan. Now have a look at this thing here. It looks like... Oh, oh that grand. Okay, just going to take a quick little break from the profile building because I think I've just about finished Grand's head. The body is looking more like a roast chicken right now, but we will get there. I've got a really cool idea for the claws, which I'm going to do next. So originally I wasn't going to do any tutorial aspect to this video at all and just focus on the profile building etc. But whenever I thunk up this little gold nugget I thought it would be a good idea to share with you guys. Not sure if your house is like my house but for some reason we always have a stash of beer bottle caps lying around the place. No idea where they come from but they sure do come in handy. You're going to need a pair of tin snips or wire cutters that can snip the bottle caps but I'm also using a 9 gauge aluminium sculpting wire here which is very easy to cut and bend into the right shape. I glued this into place using miter fast super glue and accelerant. I then cut the wire off at a sheer angle creating the sharp points of the claws. I needed a way to attach the claws to the Grand model so I used the screw in the base, my intention being that I would actually screw the claws into the arms of the model. Lastly I smeared the whole thing in polymer clay and put them in the oven before attaching them to the model. Right, with Grand's claws ready to tear down some gates, let's get back to some profile building with a few thoughts from Benji over at Benji's Hobbies. So Grand is going to be an absolutely colossal model to see on the table. It's such a huge size and so imposing that anybody that comes up against it is going to be absolutely quaking in their boots. Now mostly I see this model being used as a narrative piece in narrative games where the outcome doesn't really matter but it's cool to play something really huge and thematic. I can see it coming up against the Minas Tirith army, defending the walls and gates of Minas Tirith, but also it could just take on any other fortress that might be in Middle Earth. Now for such a cool and imposing model like this, I think just for narrative games it would be absolutely wasted. So I would love to see some special rules specifically for Grand. I can definitely envision it being used as part of a legendary legion which includes trolls, great beasts of Golgoroth and some orc archers which are around it like a moving fortress. So this piece could be like a battle platform where they can throw rocks, where they can fire arrows almost without any risk to the models themselves. In terms of points, this model is going to be hefty. If it comes with a couple of trolls, a couple of great beasts of Golgoroth and a load of orc archers as well. I can see this maybe being six, seven hundred points as a single model. It's almost like a one model army. Stand your ground! Obviously, I'm just having a guess at points values here. Without actually play testing it and putting it through its paces, that's going to be very difficult to judge. However, I'm really hoping that once Michael's got this finished, we're going to put it up against my White City and my Gondorian force, and we're really going to put it through its paces. So, Michael, when it's done, make sure you bring it up to see me. I really am pinching other people's ideas here with my profile building, aren't I? Well, work smarter, not harder. 
As I carried on sculpting some of the details, I was actually watching the behind the scenes of how they made the original Incredible Grand model from the movies. I've used completely different techniques to make my model, but I did take note of some of the texture that David Tremont managed to achieve in the screen used bigature, making it look like hammered iron. I wanted to reflect that in my model also. The only problem with this is that it took up so much time and I was running out of time to get this model ready for the collab. History became legend. Legend became myth. And for two and a half thousand years. For two and a half thousand years, Michael spent his evenings after work prodding his Gron model with a sculpting tool just so the texture would look like hammered metal. Anyway, that's the clay sculpting part of this model almost complete, so I thought I would reach out to the big MESBG boss man himself, Lachlan over at Zorbazorb, for his thoughts on how he would adapt Grand for the tabletop before I give you guys the fancy glamour shots. I'm here in my half-finished courtyard of Minas Tirith, literally about to build the gate, and I had a little thought on how we might use Grond on the battlefield. He's a huge ram, landing a big strength 10 hit in the combat phase, re-rolling wounds, and each successful wound is probably three or four wounds. On top of that, I reckon a scenario special rule to synergize with a magical spell from the Witch King could get a big splash of damage on one impact, maybe even 2d6 wounds to just annihilate that gate of Gondor. Now, of course, upon his housing, no fire would catch, so he's going to be defense 10, maybe even immune to range damage. Grond, the tribute to the Hammer of the Underworld from Sauron's Forge, he's not getting brought down by a bowman of Gondor, and he is going to smash that gate apart. Run, reach it. Bring up the wolf's head. So there you go guys, that is my attempt at sculpting Grand. Not quite finished yet, some spikes and details to go on around the back. Got electronics to put inside so that he can breathe fire. I've got the whole contraption to make. So if you're interested in this project, please subscribe so you can see the rest of that. Also, please be sure to check out all the other collaborators for this project in the description below this video. And also let me know what you would do with Grand on the tabletop if you had it as part of your army. Because I think it's pretty cool. And if it could be used in the game, that'd be awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'm going to leave you with John. He's going to help you press the subscribe button. Hopefully. <laughs> right. If I had Morgoth's hammer ground, I would use it to smash that like button on this video.